meeting to order. The Miami Township Board of Trustees, October 21st, 2024. I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of October 7th. So moved. I second. Any additions, corrections, discussion? I have none. I have none. We move and second to adopt the minutes of October 7th, 2024 as presented. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The minutes are adopted. I uh, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $101,176.81 from the general fund $11,984.04 from cemetery $1,803.88 from fire $32,523.22 from the road fund $54,865.67 so moved. I second. Uh, it appears to me that the main bump is in the road. I guess we got bills for the contract work. Called and paid. Yeah. The Jurgensen forty Jurgensen. fifty thousand dollars. Was that all everything? No. We still have some there yet. Um because we had to Is the Jurgensen in here? Yeah. They didn't look though. Yeah. What about well, that? We, we don't need to go into detail unless you I mean, I mean, question anything. That was, that was okay. in the door right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, a seasonal up. So totaling 101,000, et cetera. I have a question about fire funds. It was, it's been moved in a second. You have a question about fire funds? Yes, or comment. Okay. Um, so 32,000, I know we've been showing, today we've been showing low payment in the fire fund. Um, we've been showing like low, low numbers in the fire fund. I think maybe the magic of getting the full timers really de did take, take off a lot of whatever, but also for a while they were low because we didn't have expenses going in. Does that number look good? And are we about caught up? Do you guys feel like we're about caught up in the fire? Well, this doesn't have that PO thing, right? No, this didn't take yes. into account the, right. the cop PO purchase. It seems like it. Okay. Um, and that includes the um, pension funds and everything. Yes. Caught up in the, okay, yes. cool. Mm -hmm. that, that includes the pensions that are caught up. Maybe. Maybe. Although I don't know that you mean as part of this figure? Yeah, because like what I got from the previous FO, she said things like taxes and those kind of things don't get factored into the paying of bills. I have that written down from her. The things that come out of the fire, like we're, we're approving, okay. I just wondered if we still got another big crunch like from pensions and things oh, that have to uh -huh. come out of the fire fund or no? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, cool. You're Outstanding repairs are not going to amount to a lot, right? 81 sitting around um, collecting dust. 81 is still remains out of service, and I have no idea what that bill is going to end up. Okay, but being. it's in the future, whatever. Yeah. Okay, I just wondered if we were approaching mm -hmm. um, good numbers. Okay, that's all I have. Well, it was moved and seconded. Other discussion? Please call the roll. Been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $1,176.81. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The motion is approved. There was surprisingly little correspondence the last two weeks. Yeah, there really was. Any that merit being put on the agenda? Nope. I should go back to doing that, but um. Well, I look. 
Uh, anything that the public would like to add? Not that I know of. Thank you. Well, Fred, if you don't know, then nobody wants it. Other people who aren't here might have something they wish to say, but they haven't come. No. Uh, fire department report. Okay, um, we had uh, 40 EMS calls, um, 10 fire calls. We did two inspections. That doesn't count street fare. Um, street fare related incidences, we had two fire responses, which were car accident related. Nine EMS calls. Um, oh, I forgot to break out. We had one transport. Uh, the nest were non transport. Um, I didn't count the amount of food truck inspections that we did um, because it's not just based on how many food trucks are there because some of them have been inspected and don't necessarily get reinspected. But you know that's a that's quite a bit. It takes about two hours for two or three people to get that all done. Uh, mutual aid requests. We had no requests for EMS. We had three for fire. Um, we had a tanker request response all the way to Jamestown for a house fire, uh, which was kind of the longest one. They actually made it all the way to the village limits and were canceled when they got to the village limits. Uh, that's a long way down there, <laughs> and especially in the tanker. <laughs> Not exactly the uh, Cadillac of the fire service. Um, we received um, eight EMS responses. The bulk of those were due to back-to-back -back calls. Um, so two simultaneous CMS calls and then we're just not staffed to be able to, to get the second edit out. Uh, three EMS calls, or I'm sorry, eight EMS calls and three fire calls. Uh, let's see. So I mentioned Medicaid one. It was actually supposed to come back today. So what, what, were the, what were the fire? Uh, there were there were two there were two tanker mutual aid calls and then one engine mutual aid call. Uh, Did we have? I mean, were they real fires? No. Well, the one tanker called Jamestown was, but that that was. Uh, oh, wait a minute! I'm talking about the wrong thing. I'm yep. sorry. <laughs> let me let me try that again. Um, the no no real fire calls on the three and yes calls right. Um, uh, one of those was assistance for rescue. Um, we had a person who was way back in the park. You know, mm -hmm. uh, actually, we had two that were similar. To that. Did you have a Did you have a gas leak mm -hmm. at Hawthorne? Yes, and that was called. We actually had two gas leaks. Mm -hmm. um, we had a gas leak where somebody was digging in their own yard. Mm -hmm. It hit a gas line, and then Hawthorne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. So Medicaid one I mentioned. Um, more of an FYI for you guys. I can't remember if I said this or not, but our go live date uh, for all of our CAD transfer to moving into the cloud is still very much on target for November 19th. Um, fingers crossed. That it, it's been a very detailed project. Lots of people involved. Lots of double checking. So. Hope it goes off without a hitch. I mean, we have backup contingency plans and everything, but it's. Um, I'm not following. What's CAD? Computer aided dispatch. Okay. Do we have that on our acronym list? <laughs> oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's gonna. I mean, that's got. That's gonna be huge. Uh, let's see, uh, you guys are aware, I met with Fred last week to go over his proposal stuff and give him directions on what I felt was needed to be prioritized. Um, and then of course, that's, there's some of those things that have dependencies, so that takes into account the dependencies in that. Um, you probably didn't really notice that the carpets were cleaned. Uh, um, took a while, but it also includes if, you, if you've got if you've been in, in the day room by chance you notice we have a we had a, a, a new couch donated to us a sectional um, so we took the old couch and furniture and you know it was all industrial stuff so we put that up in the mezzanine and we're going to use it actually for training props um, so that that actually is pretty cool so they spent some time cleaning that couch up and everything and don't sit on it you'll fall asleep. 
it's quite flush. Um, so I had MSAR out for COT inspections. MSAR is a company name. Um, and uh, uh, they come out every six months or so. Uh, the cot that was sent back to Fresno for the massive repair work is on the pricks and it is, uh, I told the guy today, we would not be repairing it since we're getting the other cot. And, uh, and there's another repair that to the charging system that we're not going to do as a result of that same thing, which is, will, would honestly probably be about uh, a 10 grand savings. Mm -hmm. so, and, and I wouldn't be able to sell that cot if I fixed it anyway. Mm -hmm. So there's no, it'd be a total waste of money to fix it. Um, and then I was elected secretary slash treasurer of the Green County Fire Chiefs Association um, on Thursday of last week. Um, so was, it that, close, was it a close race? Uh, no, it was not a close race. Uh, generally, the way those work is um, nobody volunteers. I, I know how it was one of those <laughs> things. So okay. I finally said, all right, yeah, okay, fine. You know, hold, hold my Thanks for your service. <laughs> you are welcome, <laughs> sir. That's all I have. Any questions for me? Uh, I thought that, <clears throat> am I right that both ambulances want cot upgrades and we're doing one yes and then when's the next one going to be? when we won't do the next cot uh, until we per or until the new ambulance is taken delivery so that'll be the next cot purchase the the one that will stay in medicaid well it will stay in medicaid two um until the new cot is in um, is serviceable so we'll, we'll be okay Other questions? Did you, Fred? Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, for personal interest. You talked about the street fair and food truck inspections. Yes. It may have taken two hours or more to do some of that. I wanted to ask you if those are done the night before the street fair or during the street fair or after They're the done the very early part of street fair. <clears throat> Typically, the food trucks start rolling in. They're able to start rolling in at five in the morning, but there are certain exceptions to that when they can come in the night before. But at that point, they're not inspected the night before. It's just either just, we just do them all, we just go line by line right down the row and just bang them out. And generally, is that before they're open for business? Yeah, um, they are, so there, there are two inspections that are done on the food trucks. There's ours that's strictly for fire safety and then there's the health department inspection. Um, and the health department inspection is not necessarily completed before the food truck opens because the health department's inspections are a lot more involved than what ours are. Um, ours take, let's say, 10 minutes-ish per truck. Theirs take a little longer than that. They can actually go quicker, but sometimes you have vendors who are less than cooperative, which means that those inspections take longer. Um, and that's usually, I won't say that. Now, that's fair. It, that usually is on the food safety side of things, not so much on our side, although we do have it. But Ohio started requiring all these food and truck inspections in the last revision of the fire code and, and, and changes to how the trucks actually had to be made, which made them a lot more expensive, but it makes them safer. Um, so, you know, it's been a lot. And, it, it, and so some vendors, you know, it took them just time to accept that this was the law and the fire departments are required to enforce it. So the other follow-up question then be, if you have inspected a vendor, is that okay? only for this instance of the street fair or is he she good for the summer or he can come back next week and they don't need another one so one of the things that the green county fire chiefs association has started trying to do um, we did a first round in february um, that was 
we just sent out a thing that said, hey, any food truck vendors um, who want to come out and get inspected, they went to a particular fire station in the county. I sent two inspectors over to help with those inspections. Had several, we were at Fairborn basically. A um, couple other fire department agencies did, and the idea was if you did that, you got a decal that you could put on your vehicle that said that at least at minimum, if you go to any other Green County kind of event, that you were grandfathered from those inspections, except for a couple things, like we'd make sure your extinguishers were still current and that kind of thing. But it streamlined that process. Unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of food truck vendors who it got involved. I think there were like, I want to say 10 out of what are typically around 200 food trucks that usually are in, in Green County. Um, so, so that was your first try? Yes. So you might do it again next oh, year? Oh, we will definitely do it again. And hopefully that snowballs. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I just want to remind you that the goal with the chamber eventually is to know exactly how much, and I don't know if vendors are paying for that, for the inspections and what we're giving in kind, but the, the eventual goal is to delineate yep. what we're putting in, what it's actually costing us, and so they have an in-kind number, and so we have an in-kind number. Yeah, and I will be working on their invoice that week. So that will all be done for that invoice. For next time? <clears throat> I'm sorry? For next time, you mean? Oh, for sorry. the last year. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure how many people we had for street fair. Um, I don't know. I, know, didn't I, I mean, it was. It was a lot. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot. I, you know, I saw a lot of parking much further out in the village. But I don't know if that was because of the changes to the parking, moving it over to Midwest as opposed to the old high school. I'm not sure how that, there had to be some impact, but I don't know how much. And we haven't had our post street fair meeting yet. And that'll be something that all comes up. The, the new um, multi-use pathway uh, along Dayton Street got a lot of use that day. It was quite a thoroughfare. Oh, yeah. I think people got tired of waiting for shuttles. and Yeah, then. yeah that's probably very true. Other fire questions? I know. Cemetery report. Let's go. Since the last meeting, we've had one burial, a burial clip on this past Saturday. We have two ashes this Saturday. We want to be in the Oak, Oak Grove and one section of our group. That's what came up there. Uh, let's say we're going to work on the fence job a little bit tomorrow to get the fence down. So nothing about it What's the fence job? Well, okay. It doesn't matter. It, it, we don't know. You can, it, I was going to talk about it later. Well, it's a cemetery. Okay. Yeah, but, I um, mean, later, in, as in not in this one. Oh, no. It, um, it, it's all part of this game. Um, the wire fence that's in the back of the oak grove it separates the oak grove from what might be a pine forest walkway section. I think, and I hope you agree, that either way, that fence is not appropriate for a nice cemetery. It's a wire fence. So one way or the other, whether we go forward with the uh, with the uh, with the pine forest walkway. I think it needs to come out. And I said, Dan? You have spare time? Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I, I didn't stop growing. I hope that's all right. That was just kind okay. of a no, right. natural progression thing. How about you, Doc? You good with the fence coming out? Yes. Okay. All good. Okay. okay. Can we talk about the pine forest under new business or old business? Or cemetery? I mean, you're the chair. We can talk about it anytime you want. Well, rather than, well, I'd like to get through the routine reports and come back. Your wish is my command. Any other cemetery questions? Road report. Okay. So we've got a trio on Hyde Road. Part of it came down that storm a few weeks, a couple weeks back. 
with a trunk, you can actually push it and move it. So it's got to come down. It's right there, Hammond. Can you see it? Yeah. yeah well, it, it sure is. That, is that what he told us about? Right. And so we cleaned up everything that had came down and he pushed off the road. He cleared the road because it did fall through. And if that trunk you ought to need it, the whole thing will move. So we're going to take it down. He's sitting right away and it's going to fall on the road if it possibly could. So we're going to lay it down and clean it up. It, it's a way, it's a hazard. It, it could be a hazard to, to cause problems. It seems like it's a long way off the road, but maybe. It's in our right, it's in right away. Is it? Like I said, it's a new. We can actually move it. It's just like that thing around. So it's pretty bad. We're going to just knock it over and clean it up. So when do you think you're going to do that? Probably later this week. It shouldn't uh, take us long, half a day. Maybe. Oh, I'm get out there and take pictures. Push it over. That's what my plan was. Make push it over to the back of the dump truck. Push it over to the back of the dump truck. Yeah. It's already ready to go. You just need a new truck. That's a <laughs> so that's on the You can push it on the trailer. Oh. Thank you. It's probably hollow. It's pretty rotten, I think. It's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully they start hitting our final round on the ditches. The final money. Because crops are off now, so we can go back a little farther and knock the corn stalls down. Mm -hmm. Keep everything farther off the road when it drifts. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. Questions? Or comments? Or comments? I looked at your roads yesterday and I thought everything really looked great. I think it's in very nice condition. Uh, I think you've got to search to do much mowing, but... Uh, like there's, there's some spots to do. Uh, like I said, it's the crops. When they got their crops off, we like to come and pass it to get everything. Yeah. The drip starts over there instead of right away. The uh, final, the final one. Backing up for one second to the cemetery, not to deal with the new one. Um, the wooden the the wooden fence between the oh, original that couple of pieces hanging. There's one that's broken and there's one that's hanging. Okay, I didn't see a broken one. Yeah, it's closer to the rock to the entrance. Um, we have a couple left. Okay, it goes like that. I have a couple in the building. Well, there you go. Okay, take care of it. That was easy. Yep. Okay, back to Rose. Uh, unless you have a real good reason not to, I really think you should replace all four tires on Brandon's, or uh, all four back tires on Brandon's truck. From the older truck? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I don't like the look of those bursts. No one eyes. Okay. So, we'll do it. Yeah. Doesn't have to be done tomorrow, but maybe yeah, before, the, before the ice storm. Right. Do you have a date on that ice storm? Uh, I think it's going to be December 3rd this year. It was the 5th last year, but it's going to be a cold winter. We'll be ready. I don't know if you noticed, but maybe take a look on your back hoe behind the... Uh, bucket. One of those lines... We got a leak. It, it's just covered with, like, oily greasy stuff oh, okay. and I just you know I just hate for you to get in the middle of January right or at least the first ice storm by December 3rd um just used it last week don't you know we're pissed it's like we used it I'm doing it all again okay. um I'm okay the next thing was the pit um I inspected that uh it looked great for what for, from what little bit we have left <laughs> every time I go in there I go well, we're going to start jumping in the back. I used to say start cutting those trees down. <laughs> we're, we're slowly moving our bird pile. You notice it's slowly moving. Yeah, back. oh, I, you got to. <laughs> yeah. Where did that huge pile of dirt come from that's up against the back? That's dirt off your oak grove road. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's good dirt. Okay, well. It had to stay in somewhere. Um, what did you do with the debris? Uh, dumpster, senior township. Hmm. Not the, Okay. Cut out the pieces and call them doing to bring it down and get a dumpster. I really Do you ever use the county demolition remodeling uh, land? You have to pay by cash or check, they don't take the card. So well, that's why I would go that way. Okay. 
get rid of them the dumpsters and they keep a roll back down here. As long as I don't load it up for them, they don't want to. I know you take tires to the county. Yeah. You can't get rid of them that way. Yeah, Brandon took all those tires away. Still got lots of mattresses and a lazy boy. They all left. Oh, did those go too? Yeah, they took the dumpster off. Oh, great. Figure what the heck. What well, happens to be a heck of a dumpster? Yeah, it's big. Yeah, the longest room. Really? The big one. Um, who has the um, crack filling? Bath. Oh, okay. I was hoping it was Xenius because we could trade them using that dumpster for big stuff. Well, they, they, they've been holding on to it. They've been using it. It's where it's been. But yeah. bath, bath has a bath. Yeah. We kind of share it. Yeah. Okay. I just hoped it was a Xenius because that wouldn't feel so bad about yeah. taking all that dumpster. It's cool. It's all, it's all good. Um, Sometime probably before December 3rd, yes. when you're at a lull, um, I would After like to- After the FETS comes out. After what? After the FETS comes out. Oh yeah, right. Um, it would be nice to get those lovely burned cars to some final resting place. Talk to him. Oh, I thought I was talking to you. Well, they got mine. All right, well. They're on a property. Him and here. If you want me to get rid of them, I'll figure out how to. Okay. They're, well, they're all right. The, fine. I'll scrap yards will pay for those. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold them. Serious money. Get rid of them. Uh, a couple hundred bucks. Maybe. They'll take me in that condition? I don't know. I'll call find out. And then we'll have to get some of these people to clean up the mess, too. Right. That's what I'm saying. His people. Mm -hmm. Not our people. I guess they are. I'll talk to him about it too. He can get rid of the dog, figure out how to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they want titles to him, being as a car. A lot of times you can't take him without a title. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they got titles to him. At least a one. It's a cheap one. Yeah. They have definitely have a title with that. There's a way they can do that uh, off a of bin, I think. Or there's a there's a procedure. We'll like if find out how to do it when you get if, if we were to go into somebody's Brotsong's property, you know, and took a bunch of vehicles and things off of the property, junk vehicles. We can get the we can get the title. The, the the way we can get the title. It's not hard. It's just an application. Well, we'll, we'll see what we can do to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I know you're just fresh back to work, uh, but still on the list somewhere. I recall is the Grinnell Mill. Those few projects. Right. Okay. It's all good. Good. That's all I have. He's tired here in my complaints. Okay. Let's go officer's report. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot. I know we've corresponded some of the last few weeks. I appreciate uh, everyone's help getting some of those other loose ends. We finally got the old person off US Bank. That has all the right signers on it now. And thank you all for signing, for passing the resolutions last time, which I think will help with the funds when I'm trying to pay bills. Um, I'm supposed to make a Friday next week, so I'm hoping we can um, get some more things in place, including the HR. I know I sent you an email about um, that I'm trying to have a, just a general employee file of all that we know what forms every new employee is supposed to fill out because I wasn't given any when I came and then when we had the new zoning person I just sort of figured it out as I went along. So now that's all in a in an employee file, all the documents that they will need. And if you think of any other ones, or if HR has recommendations when we go through that channel, then we can add on to it as needed. <coughs> um, if there isn't one in there for a social security application we probably yeah, I think sometime. I, yeah, so I remember, I think I only have the Oprah's one, so that's good. I forgot about the op the option, so mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll add that in. Thank you. Um, still just, you know, a little tiny new sense, the big ones I think have all been taken care of, but, um, you know, we talked about some of those funds, not, when I'm not sure where to place them, and I think it might also help, I assume we're going to get the papers back from the auditor in the last two years soon, since they completed it, and, and then I can look at some of what was done before. 
Are you talking about the results of the lobby? No, I mean like they have oh, open papers, papers right through the country. Yeah. So yeah, I can't just be like, well, what did we do last year? Um, so that also might be things. things. Back, yeah, they should. Well, uh, we, uh, yeah. So we, wait, we, wait a minute. They took boxes of paper off site. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I've never had an auditor do before. But two, two um, years worth of records. They have a lot of records from a lot of things actually because we didn't have access to them. And they're very far away, so I'm not exactly sure how we get oh. do that return. But um, sometimes if they have other audits in the area, they can drop oh, things by. Or, do you know she is she included? Yeah, I thought she was like four hours, so yeah, they've been there. Anyway, yeah, maybe, maybe with the grandbaby visit, you can pick up some uh, <laughs> audit files or something. Sure. Um, so some of that might be helpful. Um, otherwise, we're just, um, it's a little bit of guesswork, but we're figuring it out. Um, I haven't forgotten about this credit card option that you mentioned like, several meetings ago, mm -hmm. but that's been on the back burner. Um, What's the credit card? No hurry. But, um, Take payment for credit. Taking payment for credit card might be a nice yeah. option. And so it would be a matter of like looking at fees. We'd have to make it worth it. The fees we pay, we'd have to right. have enough credit. Anyway, so I just want you know I haven't That's forgotten that. We could be like everybody else and add 3% you know, and tell them. Right. You know. I mean, we probably have to. Yeah. Um, and um, I think that yeah, I can't think of anything else that I have. Um, all the stuff is getting to, to the update. Auditors submitted their report, and those papers are signed, and the adjustments made in UAN. So that's back to them, and then we have that piece of this stuff. And, and you're committed to a phone conversation with Maddie? I did have that. I have it already. Oh, you had it? Yeah, okay. I mean, she, she seemed quick. She wasn't, she seemed less concerned than I thought she should be, but that's fine. <laughs> she almost didn't want to talk. Yeah, a lot of it was HR and payroll and stuff compliance that we know we're fixing anyway. I I assured her that we're taking steps to make ourselves compliant in those areas, and she's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But, and um, just a few little fixes. And, um, yeah. Plus the overpayment thing, and that settled. But we're not going to have a sit down meeting with that. We decided no, right? we're not going to do she, that. Okay. Did, she, I, I wanted to, but she, she didn't want to drive 40 hours to do it. She me. I think she, she's sick of us. Yeah. So I, I took some notes. I'll, 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 in my, I'll get them. You know what? There's not much. Um, it does remind me, though, that we, we've been passing things, making motions and doing resolutions and then not fully put, getting them to Gina. So we moved out for money but didn't tell Gina and we did appropriations to pay YCSDC, we didn't tell Gina and we, um, we agreed to let the Glen pay by EFT but we didn't quite work that out. Oh, I didn't have to think about that. I mean, he so, called you, didn't he? Um, well, I saw that that's one of the things he wanted on his submission, so I asked U.S. Bank about it, and then I emailed him what we need. The ball isn't there for Well, I will take on if there's something in the minutes. Or if someone has a meeting, we should run a list of duties. Uh, uh, duties I'll, so I'll, I'll flag it. And that's a chair thing? So if it's uh, a meeting where I'm I mean, not there. You can read the minutes too, but yeah. I'll still make a point of okay. uh, bringing it up. That's true. Okay, that's great. Thank you. At least for the next month and a half. Till Christmas comes through. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I won't have to be chair after December. Uh, anything else from or for the fiscal office? So you two said there are two revenues that go there, just two seventy-five thousand. I think I've located both of them and they're all broken down. Great. Because it's once I know what to put them in, it's a pretty quick thing in my end. Yeah. So um, that's great. That might be helpful. Thank you very much for sending yeah. that over. Because I looked at so. the David Graham emails and I just saw the other ones that we talked about, but not yeah. those. So I, I I want to apply for associate's degree in accounting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> An honorary degree. Mm -hmm. So I um, learned a lot. I think it might be worth uh, commenting that our county auditor 
uh, leaves office at the end of this month. Early. He leaves early, right? Right. He, he, was, he was supposed to go until, who knows, well, his term? So, you know, his term would be, I guess, just a couple months. Oh, long. he was up? He was up this year? No. No, no he's not year. up. So he's in he's he's gone a couple years. more years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be working for the city of Beaver Creek. And he will be missed. David Graham is not going to be our county auditor. We don't know we who, heard. who I am over who will be the next. It will be chosen by the, as I understand it, the Republican Party Executive Committee, or Central Committee. So that would be our new contact? Because I've emailed him about a few things over since April, but that obviously would be someone yeah. else now. So I guess Very we'll likely we'll hear this week because okay. he'll yeah. be gone. Okay. Uh, is that it for the auditor? Fred. Um, it's not, uh, um, I'm not sure I understand it, I'm not sure I need to, but what pieces I heard, and I have trouble hearing, is some of your files, two years of your files, are in the account, accounting office of the county? Um, of, uh, of an auditor. Auditing firm. The private auditing firm, not a state one. Oh, okay, so I was just worried that the county auditor is leaving oh, yeah. and you might not have your files back. That's what I was misunderstanding. I would they actually don't, be they don't more know. worried about contract auditor. Okay. I doubt he wants to take many files home with him. Uh -huh. Well, I have one more thing for yes. this sponsor type of business. Yes. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about Marilyn. About uh, a year or so ago, she discovered that there was a discrepancy in payroll uh, accounting. And she has diligently fo followed up on that for, for, well, right up till today. And within the last couple weeks, a month or so, she, and, and she talked with prosecuting attorneys, and she talked with auditors here and there, county, state, and, uh, and finally put together a package that made everyone satisfied. And uh, and uh, I believe that's all signed, sealed, and in process, yes? Yes. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So that associate degree is not done. So, do you have a middle name? Marie. Marie Due Diligence. I'm adding that to your name. <laughs> due Diligence. It's a Thank you for the time. You have another middle name now, Due Diligence. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's, supposed that's to be, a lot to live up to. That's supposed to be a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you write that on your checks now. <laughs> Did not write her name, Due Diligence. That's all I have for this box, okay, Jesus? Standing committee reports. Oh, let's have a real brief zoning inspector update. Yeah. Just good idea to keep the public informed. Our new zoning inspector. Yeah, I got something for zoning too. Okay. Our new zoning inspector is uh, on the job. Um, he's all set up. He's ready, willing, and able. For the video, would you say his name? Uh, it's Brian Lucas. Mm -hmm. Zoning administrator, not an inspector. We'll have to change the agenda now. Um, I've sent him a couple of things to deal with. Uh, I haven't heard back from him. I hope he'll hear soon. Uh, he's worked on a couple of small things. He's met with Kerry Smith and has received a wealth of knowledge from uh, from Kerry. Uh, they got along famously and. She's welcomed him to contact him 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. Uh, that woman's crazy. <laughs> Good. Anyway, um, so I think I think he's got the tools that he needs. He just needs to start putting a shovel in the ground and getting to it. 
Got his name on the website, so people could contact him too. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I, I just remember I asked you about the application to work you, along. You brought me one for a forward. I signed it through. Okay, that was that was you. Well, the other package you had was. there with it was for something else. I don't. Oh, that wasn't the rules. I thought it looked like it was the rules for. Might look like another application for something else. I, I just returned the one for the culvert because I thought I already talked to her a long time ago. Okay. I knew what she was doing. I just stapled everything together. I, I thought they were. Right. I still had the other the shop. But I thought that's. I think okay. Mine fell out. I don't right. know what to. Okay. Um. So I will give that to um, Brian and ask him to forward it to the applicant and get that taken care of. Uh, we've got um, all his office supplies. Uh, there's a laptop on order. Uh, I bought a printer, and scanner, pencils and paper, stapler, Scott's tape. He's ready to go. Compass? No, no compass. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. May I ask a question? Yes. Fred. The new person. Brian Lucas is a zoning administrator now, not a zoning inspector. Both. Always oh, both. Yes. I didn't know this. That's what I wanted to know. Is the inspector job gone, or is that duty overtaken by somebody else, or he takes it? Okay. He takes it because the zoning inspector position, when you only have one position in a in a township, does everything. You know, by necessity. So. So he has a broader. For portfolio, so to speak, and so we're acknowledging that he has already that that job already is broader than inspector. Okay, I I just want to understand why there was a name change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on the next agenda, you want me to change that to zoning administrator's report? Yes, please. Sure. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Um, and you got something? Yeah. Last time I talked about inviting Dale Arnold, he accepted. We set a date for November 13th, and we have a choice of 6 or 7 p.m. I think probably 7, just because 6 is a weird time. 5 is good. Um, Y'all are invited if you come, and the subject will be, I have to put the words, we worked out what the subject would be. We don't want to be free for all while people just come in with their pitchforks and talk about their view on solar, it's more, um, the laws surrounding that metal solar, but smaller than 50 megawatts, but greater than personal. Here? Here, on November 13th at 7 p.m. And I'll do some kind of advertising for it and, and give, send an invitation to the BZA and the Zoning Commission. Turns out, it doesn't matter. We'll find out when you get there. BZA may, may need a heads up. Um, this stuff because they put them. They may be tasked with some things having to do with that. So they might as well see who will you get to come. It will be open to the public? Yes, public. It will be advertised in a local newspaper or something? Yes, our website in a local newspaper and probably Facebook. Well, I'm happy about that. I have as I said in the last meeting, I have a lot of respect for Dale Arnold. And then when we get our report back from the um, Zoning Commission, will we'll help us think about it. Um, and it's, I think it would be nice to have a agreed upon set of facts, which I hope he's going to deliver. What do we say that a shared set of facts or from their phrase for that? Okay, let's move on to standing committee reports. MBRPC. MBRPC, I didn't go because it was when we were meeting with Frederick, I said that very morning. We had arranged the meeting so many times I didn't want to screw it up. Green County Regional Plan. I went to both executive committee and full commission meeting last month and uh, there was a lot of things, and they were all Bath Township. Uh, thanks, Michelle, for giving us all that stuff on the way out the door. 
just a bunch of revisions to their zoning code uh, and one request to change a zoning district from a um, from a B1 to a PDB1A something I don't know. So our new zoning person Brian is the head of that zoning commission that made those amendments. So mm -hmm. he's, he's the head of the commission. I don't quote me on that. Clifton Union Cemetery met. Uh, it's been well over six months, I think. Well, maybe just about six months. Uh, and replaced Margaret Silliman as our clerk. Uh, Linda Parsons will be our clerk. She's also on board. Um, and after our meeting, we all went to West Banco and changed the name signatures on our accounts. Uh, we are open to Gina being our clerk when, uh, when, if she's willing, other things stabilize. Uh, so Margaret went over uh, the records that are still stored here with me and gave me the checkbook and uh, all that will still be stored here and Linda will just call when she needs to come in and uh, work with the records. So you would say that transfer all went smoothly? Yes. Yep. Yep. And Margaret will be on call to answer questions and whatever. Uh, no. Yeah. There are two file drawers in our filing cabinet, in our four drawer beige cabinet, that I believe are committed to the Clifton Union Cemetery. I um, will go through those again. I went through and actually much of it isn't Clifton Union. Isn't? That's what I noticed. I, well, maybe the transfer from the firehouse to here. I'll, I'll uh, go over that again. Yeah, which is, as I recall, some real old stuff. Uh, did you put, you know, some of those files or the more important ones? That, or, I would much prefer that to having a paper bag, a paper box under my. That's what I was hoping. Uh, thanks for reminding me. Mm -hmm. I have, um, that reminds me, I have in front of me who they say were bonded. We have zoning inspector Richard Zoff that obviously has to be changed. We have you speak a little louder. I, I have in front of me, I asked for an update on who, who in our township is bonded and for what positions. The three trustees, the fiscal officer are all current. Um, zoning inspector is still Richard Zoff. We have to switch that over. But Cemetery Sexton is Margaret Silliman. Was she bonded because she's ours or because she was yours? And does that have to be changed to Linda Parsons? Does anybody know? So it says, so. I will ask the uh, county auditor. Apparently, Margaret, county for us. Margaret was bonded twice. Once as fiscal officer, one as cemetery section. Right. No, okay. she wouldn't be that cemetery section position because she handles no funds. OK. So she not for the township, well, but she, does she was so for we, the right. union for cemetery. Would we pay for to have Linda Parsons bonded? We would pay half because we split out of okay. the ownership. Okay. And, uh, I'll follow up on that. Interestingly, um, Carrie and Denise were not bonded during that period because I didn't even know it. And we bonded as on inspector. Can I ask a question? Hopefully, it was good. Well. question? Yes. The Clifton board, did you guys talk to the grave rumors? Did you make a decision on grave rumors or not? Will you speak louder? Grave rumors, did you make a decision on having them come in for work? Because you had asked about it and, uh, and I never got an answer. I didn't we'd like to talk to them next year. Okay. 
what I kind of figured about it. I didn't know if I should call him and tell him, hey, I didn't get back to you. Because they'd asked, you know, they called me then. Right. Well, not this year. Okay. So I don't have to worry about calling. Okay. Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Yellow Springs Development Corporation. Um, did I tell you that our um, new um, director resigned before she started? Nope. No. No. Okay, so. <laughs> that happened. So. Um, so what's next? Reopening. Redefining and reopening. Uh, do you suppose you work on the same list of applicants or? I'm not sure. I mean, I, okay. I think they'll like, be invited to apply. They like, uh, but they're opening it back up and re, re, re reaching out. Did you get reasons? <coughs> the reason might have been another opportunity, but I'm not sure if that's the reason. <laughs> Uh, it's Green County Township Association. I have not been to. You didn't go to this last one. The last May. Yeah, either it was hosted by the. Um, by elected official the, the <coughs> legislators. So I didn't go to that. Uh, <laughs> I will. National Dairy. <laughs> And we're meeting, having a small meeting Thursday, but not, not much to report on the continuous improvement. I have a question. I'm just curious how uh, the committees are decided. I mean, like, was that a standing thing, like when you came in to, try to being a trustee, that these are all the organizations that were representatives as far as township, or did you just decide Things you're interested on and report on them, or how does that? I'm just curious. The beginning of each year, some of these are, you know, we have, uh, you know, statutory responsibility. Uh, Which ones? Uh, Clifton Union Cemetery. Okay. Uh, we're. Yeah. Yeah. Made it, depending on how you want to define statutory. Yeah, Both of the regional, well, the Miami Valley, we join. Yeah, uh, member. The county regional planning, I think, is. No, we join that also. Oh, okay. We're, we're pay, dues paying members of us first, too. Um, the development Corporation. And the third one. That we join. Dues paying members. Uh, same with. So I guess Clifton Union is the only one that uh, you might say is statutory. And then, um, we have had other committees. Um, Mark was on a senior citizens mm -hmm. advisory. Uh, okay, so that list kind of ebbs and flows. And yeah. Okay. I just wonder. I guess the environmental commission went off, off the list. It did. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I when I came on the board, I was asked if I'd like to. Chris invited me to take over my environmental planning, and then asked if there were others. There was a sustainability committee that was on, and they went by the wayside. And the Are you on the active transportation committee? I am on the active transportation committee. Thanks for reminding. Should me. I add that to the agenda? Sure. Should I report to you guys? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's why I kind of wondered. Like, is there anything else that you do extracurricularly? Something you report on behalf of township, or how do you, uh, how do you decide what's related? Well, I was asked to be an active transportation because I, so, so that they could have someone from the township. So I guess so. So I'll add that to the list of the committees. Active transportation committee, that was called. Yeah. Okay. So let me report on what they're doing. They're <laughs> they're doing a big uh, big downtown audit again. The last one they did a big top downtown audit with Met, actually with Miami Valley Regional Planning. They. Noted trouble spots. A lot of the work has been done. You know, a lot of the new crosswalks and the big paths and the and safe routes to school. And now they're doing a second round. And 
Um, it's going to be expanded, especially as we start thinking about possibly 120 or plus new apartments coming from one side of town and um, increased tourism and traffic and stuff. So there's, actually there's going to be, now that you mention it, there's going to be another walking audit that people are welcome to, to join. Fred, you might, sounds like something to be up your alley, a walking audit of downtown to look for um, things that could be improved. Is that a timed event or a It is, and I'll, 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 get you, I'll get you that time. And then may I speak as a citizen, that time on that is really bad for anyone who works during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Usually is. Oh, did you see it in the Yes, it's like 3.30 in the afternoon or something. Uh, on which what means any, so, you know, uh, yeah, people I, I know who might be interested, but they work until 5. Yeah. Can't oh, I missed this one. When? I think it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. I don't remember the date. But I remember seeing it and thinking, is it bad in time. this last week's newspaper? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Either that or online. I don't remember where I saw it. Well, who would have the date officially? It's probably Neil no. Springs News, no? I'll get it to you, Fred. Thank you. Yeah, it never occurred to me to report out to some that committee to this one. But um, I suppose it could have relevant, I mean, Thanks for dragging that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's anything else I see. Like secret societies, <laughs> too. Uh, another topic. Are we in your business? No. Okay. Chris, do you want to talk about the concept? Oh, oh we're, we're moving on. About oh, is, this new, is this new business? Oh, old business? Uh, cemetery business? Is this new? When is it, Chair? <laughs> I guess technically it's old business. Technically, I think it is. Uh, would you like to talk about concept plan for? First of all, where did this come from? First of all, are we skipping old business? Our new business? I'm sorry. I was not aware of there being any new business. Is there a new business? I have a, I have a new business. Okay. okay. It was suggested to me recently that uh, as a result of many goings on in the, in the in the township, specifically in the fire department's reorganization and everything. And as a result of a, what I thought was an excellent article in, in the uh, Yale Springs News, thank you for showing up, Lauren, um, <laughs> you gonna watch re this? regarding our, uh, the proposal from Fred about the work that he feels needs to be done, and, uh, issues that may you know, need to be worked out that uh, it was suggested to me that perhaps we might consider as a board uh, writing a letter uh, either to the editor or to social media or both uh, and expressing our interest in the public's input into how they feel the, 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 the specifically the fire department you know, is uh, the, you know, the new full-time system of the fire department is working in the village. And if there was any concerns that, you know, we would welcome uh, those either in person or by uh, email uh, or uh, letter. Um, it was also... An excellent idea. It sounds like something Fred has said. It, remind, it was reminded to me that, you know, we are coming up on a, a levy cycle next year mm -hmm. and the, you know the more that we get out our our information of what we're doing and you know and how well we're doing it I, i'll be perfectly honest with you um you know it could do nothing but benefit us yeah. in the public eye so um if that's something that the three of us think is a, a good idea um i know that there's an offer on the table to um, just to, to um, give a suggestion of, of potential talking points in this letter. What offer something to Offer to, to give us some talking points that may be put in this letter to the editor. I think that's a very good idea. And Donald Chairman Hollister, I should say. <laughs> Chairman Hollister graciously volunteered to uh, author of this letter. Yes. With advice. Well, I, I, I see it as like 
Frederick has given us a framework to work it under, and that is like who we've been historically and who have we've become, and our system's not quite keeping up with who we've become, and that's why we're going through all this and having growing pains and having to establish things, policies, procedures, and job descriptions and all of them. So that's the way I look at it. You, you said something like how the public feels about us becoming a new professional, um, as in we just made three new professional positions. I wasn't aware that the public really knows that. I don't know that the public really knows that we've created three full-time pension positions. It's in the paper from last week. From last week. Oh, yeah. shoot, shoot. Front page. Yeah, front okay. page. What was in the paper last week? Um, a description of the fire department's conversion okay. into a professional organization okay. and three positions. Okay, cool. It's, a, it, yeah, it's sort of a, a com the article is a combination of, uh, there hadn't been an article on the township for six weeks. So they put together a uh, number of topics. Yeah. Okay, I've withdrawn. Sounds like you guys are already all over it. Well, and obviously, you know, we'll all review a draft and you know, suggest any changes we might, or any additions. As for you, uh, my uh, I will. Uh, could go wrong. Really, I'll work <laughs> on that. And and the the suggestion is that it be brief. Good start. You said that it's not for the table. You didn't see the numbers from and uh, the suggestion that it'd be brief, and you didn't say whose suggestion that right. was. I didn't. <laughs> okay. uh, along those lines, I will ask Fred, uh, and he will, just before the meeting, I texted with him, Tuesdays, there's supposed to be a check-in at 1 o'clock every Tuesday, either by phone or he'll be here. Uh, now that that can be flexible, but that's the plan, and he will report uh, at least in general terms what he's done the previous week and what he plans to do in the coming week. Does that mean there's one tomorrow? Yes. Is that by phone or is that person? By phone. Okay. Do you want to talk to him tomorrow? Uh, I'll, we're texting back and forth. We'll, okay. we'll, I just wondered if he was going to be in town tomorrow. So. No. He, his phrase was, if he was still up north. I don't know what he's referring to, but... Uh, he, he, has a, he has a business in the Cuyahoga County. Okay. The, the Cuyahoga County. <laughs> <laughs> Not Cuyahoga County. The, shall we move on to old business? If there's no more new business, I guess that's where we're going. Okay. I have one item for old business. Tell me. <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I made a uh, drawing on the whiteboard behind us uh, of a concept proposal that I thought that we might consider uh, based on a visit to Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati. Uh, it, was, it was totally new and and I thought it was a very um, enticing idea of having, using uh, tree-covered areas, if you have them, and we certainly do, to establish a natural burial, natural burial section uh, dedicated to cremated remains only. And it would be um, designed to be sort of a kind of a little walk in the woods. Uh, concept. There would be a small walking path, no, no wider than three feet, uh, that, that would go through the property. Uh, and there would be then burial sites uh, along the path, uh, behind the path, next to the path, uh, not in any particular order. And those would all be obviously codified, and, and so you would, you know, we have a record of where somebody is and how to get to it and all of those things. Uh, and this is the concept that they came up with. We changed it a couple of times. I, I, I looked at it and they added a couple of suggestions and they, they made some uh, revisions. And this is not, certainly not final, um, but it's, it, you know, it's, 
I think it's a nice plan. Uh, it goes back, it uses, everybody knows this, but I guess I feel like I'm even getting up yeah. This is the Oak Grove Cemetery here. Mm -hmm. This is the, deline the delineation where the nice dense is going to be removed between here and there. There is a stand of about 75 feet, roughly 50 to 75 feet, uh, going um, whatever direction that is, east. east. Uh, we, we do still own the property behind that also to back this line right here, but it's not in pine trees. It's more in the deci deciduous sort of tree, uh, whereas this has a fairly strong canopy of, of pines, uh, minus one, which fell down in the storm. And so this is a, this is a start. This is called, let's call it, you know, a start, phase one. Um, The first thing that would be done uh, if we decide to go with this would be to uh, pretty much grub out the whole area uh, of, of not undergrowth. We're going to leave as much of the normal vegetation on the on the ground uh, as possible. But the, all these pine trees have never been trimmed or anything, so they've all got dead branches, you know, everywhere, and so you can't hardly get around them until you cut the dead branches up to about six feet or, or so. So then it would be open, but still totally natural on the floor of the, uh, floor of the, of the project. Um, a main entrance, uh, which... Is that wooden structure right there? Yeah, which would be with or without the, the structure, you call it phase one or phase two, you know, however you want to, you know, whether you want to do it all at one time or, or put that in later on, but that would be in here and it would be uh, served two, pur two purposes. One would be to identify the area that, that's back there mm -hmm. and for two, to, to have a place where people can uh, have a small gathering for um, uh, it's not graveside side because there's not that much room out you know, to everybody to stand right there. Uh, best they can do is walk by it. Uh, and you know, so that would be you know kind of a pergola look um, that's in this little what we call a plaza area, which is a little more grandiose than we would be going towards in the gravel. Uh, this is a kind of look of that. This shows what size the graves are. There's approximately. 175 total sites, uh, single sites, excuse me, 100, 235 total sites, uh, double sites for obviously two people, uh, 175 of those, and single sites 60 and total 235. Um, so, so those numbers come from uh, a footprint of so many square feet and estimating a certain distance and all that? That sounds and that sounds like a black hole. So Here this is different because originally I thought you were creating a scattering walk. I thought it was like a cremains only. Are we look? Are it is cremains only. Yes. But they're buried in a specific spot, not scattered. They can be scattered. That's the option of the family. It can be scattered or it can be in a nerd. In a interred. No, in interred, not. That's what he said. Okay. In a biodegradable container. Not interred. Like right. like salt urns that they have. Yeah. And it would be marked with a. Uh, I think I showed you some pictures of either one or two oxens, a boulder, a rock of no more than approximately 24 inches, with a with a bronze plaque engraved and set into the boulder. Uh, I have more pictures if you didn't remember seeing that. Or a flat stone to, uh, what's the next barrel? 12 by 24? 12 by 18. 12 by 18. 12 by 24 if you think I'm in mode. Oh. Um, a, a flat stone, unpolished, uh, similar to what's in the prairie. Uh, the reason that there's two options is, is the, the, the boulder would be approximately twice the price of the, of the uh, flat stone. It would be about six hundred dollars for the for the marker, flat marker, and about twelve hundred dollars to have a stone and a bronze plaque 
the art fees or what they're going to be paying somebody to create it? They would be paying somebody to create it. This is in addition to what we would be charging, which I, or at the moment, I don't have a suggested price to charge. We charge a hundred to the prairie. A hundred? Oh. I have I I have not been seven, oh seven, seven yeah for the church oh well I mean for the grave site itself oh I'm going to come out late for the right yeah the general concept sounds great to me I'm only aware of that land as over there the other side of Oak Grove I haven't looked at it I don't know I'll go look there you go I'll take a walk it's a walkway. When you say natural burial, do you also mean cremation, which isn't, in my mind, natural, or or do you, you mean something that I didn't understand? That's the term that the that the cemetery in Cincinnati uses. It's natural burial, and they're saying that because uh, nothing that is nothing that's not biodegradable is being put at the grave site. And there's no. Caskets or shrouds or yeah, but those other okay. things. I mean, um, but are you talking about the, the body has been cremated? Yes, sir. You're not talking about a natural burial in which the body's been put in the ground with no casket and just left to right. degrade. That, that's the other two cemetery locations. Okay, have. so this is a different concept for me, just mm -hmm. personally. To mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Definition. Me too. Well, Spring Grove, if anybody doesn't know, is probably the largest most beautiful, oldest in cemetery in Cincinnati, or in the state of Ohio, located in Cincinnati. It is just beyond words. Wow, um, should be visible. The so price, the cost, uh, I guess I should throw that out there, yeah. would be price yourselves. approximately, this is, this is no pergola, and at this cost, it's just, this is the this is the upfront cost for the for the um, for the survey work and to have the the pins, the marking pins put on each one of those black dots, all 235 of them or whatever, uh, all along the grave, and to have the walking path flagged off for somebody. To put gravel. Right. So you're going to have spaces. They'll all be pinned. They'll have numbers. Yep. So a person can't go. I want to go right here. Yes, they can. But they'll have to take a space. You know what I'm saying? You can't just go. I want to go right here. They'll have to go. They'll have to walk through, and they'll see a. They'll see one of the no. discs. One of our. And they'll choose that space. Yes. Okay, gotcha. One of the one of our gotcha. famous discs. Got it. It'll be a gravel path. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the surveying, you were going to throw us a number. Oh, the, sur the surveying, the pinning, the marking the map. Yeah, all that stuff would be about thirteen thousand. Uh, this concept drawing we're in, I think, around fifteen hundred. I'm not sure whether the revision added to that or not. The price may be a little bit less because originally the idea is that they would mark off all four corners. Talk about work. All four corners of every single three-foot square grave, as it were, plus the locating pin. Right. I said we don't do all four corners of a you know, of a cremation site. You know, we can save money on not doing all those. So that's like well, you could just eight hundred and the pins foot by three-foot pattern. That you it's right here, you know, right, right. Where it's sure. yeah. There are rules about us being able to identify where those spots are. There's a, there's no, some rules. kind of rules about. We record them, it be numbered, we record the recorded number. Recorded the number, you don't have to have geo nope. wings. Nope. Uh, we have to like in, in the we prairie, in the don't. prairie, do we have to be able to go find someone? We can. We can find anybody. Do we have there. it? We know right where we're at. Yeah. Sure. There, there's no. There's when no, no when Danny's, will we be able to find him in the Yeah, there's pins all over. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's pins all over. So I'm confused that you also said one could have cremated remains and they could be dispersed among in that Three area. Square. And therefore, that means to me that there could be more than 235. 
or does that mean you still have to have a marker someplace for that person and that takes up a space That's even correct. though that person's remains have been dispersed as opposed to placed? That's correct. I guess okay. that's up to us, though. No, no we it's recorded how it's Or it's up to us if we want to say, well, here's a plaque if you just want your name engraved in that and you're scattered here somewhere. They, they, have, that, they have that in Spring Grove. Uh, and we have that at our other right. our prairie. Right. So when you say scattered, you you literally mean it can just go. Whoosh. No, it has, yeah, to, be, it has, to, be it has to be in square. that footprint of right, right, correct, the three, three feet or whatever. Oh, oh, I so don't it's understand. Laid that. on the top of the ground rather than buried is what you're saying. Right. I went to a memorial this week that was wonderful. It was over the weekend. It was at this beautiful church, and they had a um, a place that where they made these little paths and a beautiful garden. And you could go, many people go out there, church members and different people, and you could scatter a person anywhere around the area. And then inside the church, there, there are little leaves on the wall, and you get your name added, you get your own leaf, but that means you're out in the scatter garden. So well, just as we have a scattering area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this wouldn't, we decided there's not gonna be any scattering out there that just records. We could make a decision okay. at some point that says, and we could just take these, you know, take these markers off that says this area right here, right across to the to the entrance. You know, take all these markers out, put a monument here, say, you know, plant a bunch of roses or whatever, and they have at it for that. We'll have to use, which is kind of repeating what we're doing yeah. with this. Yeah, sorry, I'm not. I don't have a. And in the race it, it's also been suggested, now that I've confused everybody, that our scattering garden and our rock water feature are, are not that friendly. They, you know, they just they seem to be very stark. Well, we it's funny. Have well, it's funny you should them. mention that our new prairie person feels the same way, and I, I actually should have brought that up today. He said, I can do up some drawing. He, he, he rattled off things. He well, if I did this, I would put this here, this here, this is what I would do over here. And he felt the same way. And I said, well, I'm going to have to ask our cemetery czar how he feel. I said, he's really protective about that area. So I'd have to break it to him. No, but I'm, he has I'm very open to it. He has ideas to soften the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Great. So maybe you can present a proposal. Yeah, I'll let him know that it's full speed ahead of him. He can write Good. something on it. Good. Yeah, that's what he said. And I, uh, okay, this guy's pushing and Chris because I had brought it up once and he thought, oh, I think it's perfectly fine. But, yeah, but you know, things change. And things change, right. More than one cremation on a space? No. So like, there are double spaces okay. next to so each you other. you could do just one on each. One on, yeah, right. right. One, one on each space. space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do we need to make a decision? What's going on? You can if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the concept that the, that the landscape architect firm, they also, if I didn't say this, they're the ones who did this for the Spring Grove. I mean, it's not their first oh. thing. Well, they did Spring Grove. They did the Spring Grove. Nice job. Um, and they also left little, little places to put benches back in there. The only thing I have is that our little when you came onto the board and for quite a few years, we had a humble little cemetery. And then, no, we didn't even have a cemetery when you got the board. Right. And Flip. we inherited it from the, the one that dissolved the statutorily. If they dissolve, we have to take it on. Mm -hmm. um, you saw an opportunity to purchase land across the street. The land across the street came with, the empty land came with Part, half of the empty land came with the, with the old cemetery. Uh -huh. That half is the one that now has the traditional cemetery part in it. Mm -hmm. The other half in, behind that was, what is it called? And it's purchased. Mm -hmm. Gifted to you, will to you. Came from the village, right? Yeah, it was promised to us. It was promised to the Glen Forest Association mm -hmm. when they bought the front half. Oh. Promised by the village. Promised by the village. The Glen Forest Association paid real money for the 
front half. Mm -hmm. They didn't make the commitment of paying the additional money for the back half, because they're broke. Mm -hmm. um, but they had kind of the first right of refusal for the back half. And I took it among myself to contact the village council and said we would like to, even though that had expired, the first right of refusal was for 10 or 20 years or something like that, but it had expired. Mm -hmm. I, I, I asked them if we couldn't renew that Mm -hmm. and then buy it from you for a dollar. Did they regret it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they did uh, so, um, so my point is we started with a humble little historical, and then we, we have quite an empire now. We do have quite an empire. Look. Keep in mind that roughly, and Dan, you might correct me on this, I feel roughly 75% of our income comes from the across the street new new traditional cemetery across the street the new traditional yeah and the prairie and the prairie natural mm -hmm. and now the oak grove mm -hmm. and 25 percent is for the expenses so we, we're keeping we're keeping we're yeah. keeping uh 75 percent of 75 75 percent of the total income of all the cemetery comes from the natural burial and the traditional yeah. and, and I think it's and our expenses to maintain those and build them are roughly twenty five percent. Maybe not build them. Not, maybe not build them. All right, maintain them. But but the but the more you build the more you yeah. know, revenue. Right. And I think it's a very um, you know sound business. It is obviously constant to five customers. And um, so that's not as I, I I just think of future trustees, and this isn't speaking against not wanting it. This is just saying um, we've kind of kind of patched it together. Dan meets with the customers, and Dan digs the graves, and now Dan puts them in the computer, and and we have well, we go to try to contact people. We have kind of splotchy records, but that's there's things that can be improved. And I just wonder at some point, and maybe we don't have to worry about this. We have to really. You know, streamline processes in it because now we got every time we add it adds a lot a little bit of complexity a little different I'm not sure Dan from your perspective can you see a time when we have maybe somebody who really keeps track of this stuff besides Probably the guy that's jumping it. off the track to do it? I certainly expect that time to come where we split off the road department okay. from the center and oh, the center on the same page. I mean it's, it's not going to be you know, not going to be huge, but it will be yeah. separate. Okay. And it will be uh, um, self-sustaining. Without, I'm not worried about precision, but big picture, how many potential grave sites are there, not counting the new concept, but Oak Grove, National Prairie, uh, and well, others. And thousands. not probably close to a thousand, probably. Because mm -hmm. even in the prairie, we have like about seventy or eighty more. But then we thought of maybe even doubling them off to um, allow couples, oh, and including family. the old Glen Forest and the traditional new. Well, you could add another five hundred because when we did, when we originally took that over. And, uh, and the, the theory was, oh, there's no space in the old cemetery. You know, you got to go across the road, and you got to open it up, et cetera, et cetera. Well, once I started putting uh, all this information into the computer, into the program that we have, the cemetery program, uh, and going out and and walking, I, I you know, I walked every single grave site in the cemetery, and you know, wrote down. You know, we ended up, I've got a did not find, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, but I've got an available list that runs around 400 in the old cemetery, 400 spaces. Not many in, in lots where you can buy eight or 10 or a whole family mm -hmm. thing, but one here, two there, one here, two there. There's around 400 grave sites in the, in the whole old section. The old on the west, on mm -hmm. the east, on the west side. West side. Does you anybody ask to be? Does anybody ask to have a, have a site in the old one? Are there burials in the old one quite often? 
Feed glass, if there's any spaces. There's not many, but there are. We have a couple it's spots a where there are graves. Thank you. you. Section R, or section S. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a few scattered out through here and here. That's harder to figure out. You know, in the old part, who's where. But, because we got a lot of did not find. Mm -hmm. So, but there are, here and there, there are graves. You have to do a lot more research on them. And don't you agree we probably sell 75% of new graves? Most of the stuff we sell is, is natural. On the east side? Natural. Mm -hmm. Most of you know, I sell graves over in the east. Right. But I still sell graves in, in the old part, too. Yeah, but Lake percentage Lake and Section S. And, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that those designers are from Spring Grove because I've heard a lot of good things about them. Not from the yeah. Spring Grove, but too. So, so what next? Is, is there any action tonight? There, there can be. I mean, I would move that we move forward with the, with the project. Uh, it would seem to me being a little more precise when you say move forward. Uh, Pay for the survey? Re retain well, for 13000 Yeah, we would retain the, the landscape architect to have the survey done and you know, start working on that. We would ask Dan in his spare time, which he has so much of, to start grubbing out the, the pine. Clean, clear the clean up. This is all going to take a while. This probably will be at best next summer, I would think. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to make a formal motion? Because they're not going to survey this thing and put all these put pins in the middle of the winter. We don't want to do anything. I, I would make yeah. a motion that we uh, contract with MSP, not MSA. Don't get me wrong. We're not going to confuse MSA with MSP. Uh, McMahon, Pearson, somebody. Contract with MSP, landscape, landscape Architects in Cincinnati. Oh, their name's on the map. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? Yes. McGill, Smith, Persson. Persson. So what, what wording do you have, Cindy? We moved to contract with MSP, I'll figure out the names, uh, landscape architecture to begin survey of the proposed Pine Forest, Pine Forest walkway. walkway cemetery, cemetery. Or section. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a separate cemetery. I would feel more comfortable if you Put a, a for, num for number the, in for there. For the estimated thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I, I'd throw more like an even fifteen because you're going to buy a fair amount of gravel. That doesn't that doesn't include a. Um, what do you laughing at? Dan said it's called job security, my man. Yeah, job yeah. security. <laughs> now wait a minute. That does not include a pergola. The motion wording specifies with MSP, are they doing gravel? No. That's well, then, then that's different. Survey, yeah. survey, survey. survey work marking the gravel paths and flagging the sites. Exactly. Yeah. You know, with, with public things, you know, you have a proposal and people come in, they look at it and they give their suggestions and this might not be a public thing, but with it any kind of, um, like, here's the first, here's their first shot with what we think there would be a kind of How about if we say not to exceed Fifteen thousand. Okay, that's fine. It's been moved and seconded to contract with MSP Land Landscape Architectures um, to begin the survey work, markings with gra the gravel path and flagging of sites for the proposed Pine Forest Walkway Cemetery addition. Not to exceed fifteen. Not to. Not to lots of commas in some of <laughs> Not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars. That sounds good to me. I move that. I, I, I won't move if you move in second. Please call the roll. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Warren. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. The motion is approved. That's all the old business I had. I, 
I, I will adjourn this meeting at 6.30.